the joy, 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 light in my soul. The joy, 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 making me whole. Though I'm broken, I am running into your arms of love. Peace of the Lord be with you on this marvelous day. Every day is a marvelous day because it's the day that the Lord has made. So we must rejoice and be glad in it. Um, so, you know, as Catholics, we entered into a new liturgical year, which is basically like, I would imagine it's like our new year, you know, instead of like waiting till the first of the year, you know, um, we are in a new liturgical year and that is um, Advent. And we as Catholics are preparing uh, for two things. Um, when we celebrate or start our uh, preparations for Christmas, um, we come into Advent and we're preparing for the, I guess, coming of our Savior, um, like his birth, right? Like his birthday. And um, then we're kind of like in that preparation to receive sweet little baby Jesus um, in the mangers of our heart, right? Um, as well as the second coming of Jesus Christ, you know? Um, and so, you know, I'm speaking about the manger. Like, um, if we kind of go into what our manger looks like or, or what, you know, Jesus' manger looked like when he was um, birthed by Mary, you know, we kind of think, man, like, there was, like, you know, a little grass on the, on the floor, maybe. Um, obviously, you know, we see that there was cows. Um, donkeys, just whatever type of animals belong in a barn, like Jesus came into a place where it was not fit for a king, you know, at, at least what we would think, like, you know, this king is born into a wealthy family, this king is born into a home, into a nice hospital, you know what I mean? No, like our king, our savior was born in a manger, you know, and was born to a family who didn't have much riches except the, that the biggest thing that they did have was love, right? Love and knowing that God was the center of their life. And so so obviously, you know, we're we're kind of trying to figure out like you know, our manger of our heart, you know, how are we preparing our heart to receive Jesus in there, you know? Um do we have straw? Do we have um, maybe some type of resentment where we can't, you know, walk on baby Jesus. Um, is there things that we need to work on? Do we need to get more into scripture to fully understand, you know, why we're receiving him or what's the point, you know, of having him, um, and remembering this time, you know? So, um, how am I preparing? You know, I, I'm going to share a few things with you. Um, one of the first things I can say is that obviously the most important thing that we should be focused on is scripture. You know, it's, it's, it's the written word of God. It's like the word gives us life and we should be reading that. And, and honestly, like I have a hard time getting into scripture and like really trying to figure out what scripture is telling me, you know? And there's other moments where I'm like, oh, okay, this is what that meant. And there's other moments where I'm like, okay, I think it means this way and it's not what it really means, you know? Um, well, anyways, um, so I decided to, I don't know if you guys saw on social media, there's this, um, there was this post going on with several people and it was like, um, if you start off on day one, December 1st, um, Luke, Luke 1, you know, you read up until the 20th fourth chapter because it has 24 chapters so it's one to 24 chapters so basically like if you start reading it for chapter one day one and you finish on december 24th um you have read all of jesus's life like from the moment of his birth to the moment of the resurrection and so you know that's that's pretty interesting like that luke does that you know like in the writings of luke and so, um, so I'm doing that. I'm reading scripture and I'm, I'm into Luke right now. And on top of that, I'm also adding this Advent Christmas um, wisdom from Padre Pio. And 
I don't know if you guys have, you know, figured this out yet. I don't even think I've really talked about him in these videos, but if you follow me on social media, you know that um, my patron, my friend, my saintly friend is um, Father Bill. And um, I don't know, like when I started my journey, he became very prominent um, in my life and he became one of my BFFs in the heavenly world. So, um, so I'm reading up on, on you know, this particular book, um, Scott Hahn was um, the person that kind of suggested this book last year. And so I ordered the book. It didn't come until days after um, Christmas or Advent had started. So I didn't get to read this book. And I am reading this book now. And it is such a good book. I mean, the, the readings are short. Um, it gives you a reflection of his scripture. And then it does prayer and then it says like an advent action and a, and then it's a blessing right so in the advent action you're doing like for example one of them was like um like what are you thankful for what what people what things what places um are you thankful for and then why are you thankful for those things so um it gets you thinking it gets a, the little wheel going for sure um and another thing like i had mentioned before um, I'm going to be finishing up this book really soon. It's the 33 Days of Morning Glory. So I, I got to kind of touch bases on that too. But um, I'm almost done with that book. And, um, you know, it's like it just becomes even more prominent how Mother Mary, you know, needs to be in our life even more, you know. And how, um, like, Mother Mary is going to take us to sweet little baby Jesus. And I have my sweet little baby Jesus right here, you know. Um, just like waiting for his birth, you know, and waiting to receive him in the major of our hearts. And obviously, if we're having a hard time with that, then we need to ask our Blessed Mother for that intercession. So um, when Jesus comes into our hearts, Mary's already waiting. Oh my gosh, Mary's already waiting, you know, at um, in the manger of our hearts, you know, welcoming Jesus. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, it's just like the picture that was painted right now in my head is like, I'm gonna start like crying like a big old baby, but um, it's just awesome, you know, like these little things that God gives us to um, be able to fall in love with him even more on a daily basis. So, um, so okay, so like I said, I'm wearing purple today because, um, you know, obviously within the church, we get to see that uh, the colors change to purple. And um, or we should be seeing in our churches too, the um, wreath, right? And the wreath, um, you know, the circle, it's, it signifies um, the eternity of God. And then in this wreath, we have three purple candles, one pink, and some churches, they do the white um, candle in the middle. And every candle has a, a significance behind it and is lit and according to that Sunday, so it gets lit on Sundays. And um, so we have hope, we have faith, joy, and we have peace. So, um, and the joy candle is the one that is pink. So in our, you know, liturgical time, um, pink, that's what it represents. It represents um, joy. And so obviously the, my intro song, if you remember it. So, so yeah really have peace in our heart for the coming of our savior you know hope and the anticipation of of his birth faith knowing that um you know jesus is gonna make his way into our heart when and if we let him in and joy is just um finally receiving him in our hearts and obviously peace like the, the peace that he brings into our hearts um for us to continue in this life until we're with him for eternity right so um so yeah so what i'm gonna do um is i'm gonna show you what my home looks like normally with my children we tend to do the jesse tree but for some reason i cannot find my ornaments so i'm having to make those again and um what i'm gonna do is um i'm ordering it off of amazon i know i'm like days behind but it's never too late to start um just, you know, it's good for the kids to see, you know, um, and read within scripture because there's different scriptures that you read when you do the, um, 
the Jesse tree. And let's see what else. And our manger, um, I had one. I have one like every year, guys. Somehow or another, so, you know, I have six kids um, and baby is already four years old. So she knows like you're not touching um, the manger. Well, she's gonna figure that out because last year she still touched it and it broke. So um, I'm, ha I'm having to replace my manger like every year. And so this year, I think what we're doing is my son has a project at school that um, he has to make a manger. So his dad is thinking of making it out of wood. Have that that we still need to put up. And obviously you don't put Jesus in until the 25th. So um, then my house is pretty much already kind of in that, um, the joy of waiting for the coming. And so, um, so I'll talk about that as I, um, so I am showing you guys the entrance of my home. Um, my husband and I, we kind of, um, revamped the living room. The little throw pillow says Christmas begins with Christ. And now I'm showing you guys our Christmas tree. It's truly a Charlie Brown Christmas tree, but, um, I think it's so cute. And, um, I like the frames in the back. They look so awesome with the tree in the front. Um, and then I'm gonna show you guys the ornaments that we made with our children this year. Um, it's a clear ornament that I got at the Dollar Tree, I believe. And we had our children um, put their little thumbs on hearts, make it into a heart shape, and then we put their name in it with a ribbon. I'm also supposed to put a picture in there, but I haven't had the time to do that. And here is the second one their little thumbprints, and then some of them decided to not follow um, my instruction, and they decided to um, kind of just freelance it, which is cute. Um, I like that too. Okay, so this is our bookshelf. Um, I'm telling you, farmhouse theme is what we revamped our living room with. So you see all the little um, knickknacks, and then you also see our religious items um, in our living room. This is our altar area where we you know pray um it's not finished yet but um it's getting there i'm thinking of, of putting our new manger on that table this is um from the old manger and um now i'm showing you the living room i ended up making these pillowcases um i bought the fabric i think i bought three yards um one and a half yards each of the um styles or colors and Instead of buying them individually, I decided just to uh, make them. So that is what our home looks like. So um, an exciting thing is that next week I will be having a guest speaker, okay? She is um, on fire with the Holy Spirit right now. And she is a mother of seven kids. You know, she's she has a lot to say. And um, it's like God is placing these mamas in my heart that need to share and give testimony on here. And um, so basically this channel is starting to kind of convert into a, um, like hearing what other mo mothers, you know, how God has called them, especially within their family, how they're supposed to teach and um, how they're being a light in this world, you know, along with their family. So, so yeah, so that's next week. And just giving a little recap, um, I, I'm pretty sure I've talked about this. It's the warning, testimonies and prophecies of the illumination of conscience. I finished this book um, yesterday. My goodness, it is such a good book. Like if you guys have the time, it, it's like one of those books where you start reading it and you don't want to put it down. Um, I truly advise that if you need to read something, um, and maybe even for, for Advent, it could be an Advent read, like preparing yourself for the second coming, you know, for the second coming of Jesus. This is a good book for that. And um, so read this book, man. Like I'm actually, you know, by the grace of God, I'm going to be seeing um, Christine today. Um, today's Thursday. I'm gonna be seeing Christine Watkins as well as one of the people from the book that um, had their illumination and um, it's and I'm excited you know someone told me like why are you so excited over this like you like to give me like kind of saying like give me a good reason why you're like 
like this is these things have been um have been known like forever and it's like yeah they've been known forever but do we really hear about them and when we hear about them do we really pay attention to them and i don't know i just felt like this this eye-opening um feeling when you are like reading the book and so at the end of the the reading the book you're just like oh, jesus like how much work do we have to do within ministry and um, having people understand like you know jesus christ is coming and his la last act of mercy is to give everybody um an illu illumination of their conscience and what their soul looks like and the sins that they've committed throughout the world and it's not something to scare people but it's just something to prepare people like a lot of people are going to convert and there's going to be some that are just going to be like eh and um and i think that's the saddest thing like even after seeing what your soul looks like how hell looks like and you know um and where your soul is going to be people are still going to be like it doesn't matter like i'm just gonna live my life just as is and that's sad you know and that hurts our lord's heart and so um so we have a job and that is to let people know that um we need to take our little sack of of coal coal into confession our sins you know and really sit down and ask our guardian angel because our guardian angel has been with us through our whole life you know like you know give me the grace to see the sins that i either haven't fully repented on and did give them to confession but really we're like eh. or sins that we um have been left in the dark that need to be um told in confession and so um so yeah so with that said if you like this video um please subscribe share it like it and um comment um so um i think this video is a little long but i guess i just like talking i'm all what woman doesn't okay well okay peace to everybody and i hope that your advent season is um well underway and you are your little manger, your hearts are waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, peace.